let's look at the simple harmonic oscillator again. We're going to look at the spring mass system this time. But in this time, we're going to look at what happens to the energy of the system. And it's just a simple problem. It's going to take a little bit of algebra to get through it, but nothing too bad. So here we go. Have a pendulum, or have a spring mass system that oscillates back and forth, has some k value, some m value, some mass, and some spring constant. And what we want to do is we want to know what's the total energy of the system at any point along its path. So we know from our equations that kinetic energy plus the potential energy is going to equal to the energy. So now the question we ask is, what is the kinetic energy? What's the potential energy? Well, we know that the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. This is our traditional kinetic energy for a mass moving at some velocity v. Nothing too difficult, nothing new, and actually nothing that we do here is actually going to be anything new. So for an oscillator, we're just going to substitute in our equation. And we saw in one of the previous videos that the oscillation of a simple oscillator is given by a times omega times sine of omega t minus phi. And this quantity gets squared. So we have 1 half m v squared. All right, so let's rewrite this. I'm going to square out everything just so we see what's going on a little bit more. And again, nothing Nothing that we've done has been a big surprise to us. Well, we're looking at a spring mass system, so let's look at what the potential energy for this system is doing at any point. So we know that, a, that a, for a spring, the potential energy is given by another equation. This is something we've seen before. It's given the potential energy is equal to 1 half kx squared, where k is a spring constant, and x is how far this guy is from its equilibrium point. And it's oscillating around its equilibrium point, so this position is a function of time. It'll vary, but we know what that equation is. So again, we substitute in. So we're just going to substitute in what our value is. So we have 1 half a cosine of omega t. Simple, easy, good to go. Again, we're going to simplify it. Potential energy is 1 half k a squared cosine of omega t minus phi quantity squared. Simple, easy, we're done, nothing new again. Uh, there is one thing that we should note. Uh, there is a minus sign that got missed over here, but the minus sign gets squared, so negative 1 squared turns into a positive 1. So don't worry about that small little mistake that we, I'm just noticing. All right, so we have our potential energy and our kinetic energy for the system. 1 half m a squared omega squared sine of omega t squared plus one half, or, and the potential energy is one half k a squared cosine of omega t quantity squared. Plug things in, and we're going to simplify into our kinetic, or our kinetic and our potential will equal our total, so we put the two together, and we get a nice big long equation. But it's just this guy plus this guy. All right, we notice that the angular frequency, this omega squared term, we already figured this out for a spring. We know what it is. We can see that it's for a spring, it's equal to k over m. This is omega squared is equal to k over m, something we've already seen before. So let's simplify things. I'm going to bring out a factor. Um, this k, this m and m will cancel. I have a factor of k a squared over here with a 1 half. I have a factor of k a squared with a 1 half, so I bring that in front, and all I'm left with is that factor in front times the quantity sine squared of some value plus cosine squared of some value. We rewrite that equation, sine of some value, cosine of some value, and we're going to be smart. We know trig, we've been through trig, so we know what this little guy is actually equal to. In case we're a little rusty on it, Remember that a triangle, if it has hypotenuse equal to 1, that the components, the x and the y components, is sine of the angle and cosine of the angle. Well, it's just an argument, theta. If I replace theta with omega t minus phi, something we can do, we can see that from trig, the cosine of cosine squared plus the sine squared is equal to 1 squared. This is just Pythagorean theorem. So when we make the substitution back in, 
this whole guy here, because of this identity down there, turns into a factor of 1. So we get that our energy at the very end is equal to 1 half Ka squared, where A is the maximum amplitude this guy goes. So pretty simple equation to, to figure out. It looks very similar to our potential energy that we've seen before, and it's actually something that we can think about. We know that at its maximum amplitude, when it's over here, that its velocity goes to zero. That means that its kinetic energy had to go to zero. So that means the total energy at its maximum displacement has to be equal to its potential energy at the maximum displacement, just because there is no kinetic energy. So if we were to substitute those values in, we could get this value at the uh, from the very beginning. But this is just another way that we can see how to use these equations in a sample problem. So again, the energy may not be as important, but the process of getting to this, that the energy is equal to 1 half Ka squared, we start, set up our problem, substituted in everything we knew, nothing too terribly to worry about, but we can see what the energy is at the end. So in the future, you're going to be working on some problems on your own, so good luck with this, and refer back to any of these uh, videos in this learning module if you have any questions.